Hallelujah! Christ is risen. Welcome this morning to church, and it's great to see so many people and, and uh, get ready. We're starting Sunday school today. Um, there's too many notes to go on through that, so uh, listen to the teachers, right? There's, there's tape on the floor downstairs, there's desks separated, wear your masks, all that good stuff, kids, and, and adults too. Um, so listen to the teachers for that, so we're excited to have that. Uh, An adult class this morning will be uh, right across the way in the auditorium. Uh, same, same thing for that. Uh, as you move through the building, please leave your mask on while you're seated. It's kind of like just like being in the restaurant, you know? Uh, if you're seated, okay, but if you're moving around, please put your mask back on and, and keep the mask on while you're moving around. Um, having said that this morning, we begin with the singing of our opening hymn, In Thee Is Gladness. Greetings in our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We welcome you to the Sunday, April 11th, 2021 worship service at Zion Lutheran Church, Lincoln, Illinois. Participating in the production of this broadcast are Casey Jones, Rachel Welker, and Robert Clem. Our organist is Dora Thompson. The opening hymn is number 818, In Thee Is Gladness, hymn number 818, found in the Lutheran service book. Randy and Betsy Pesch are sponsoring the flowers on the altar to the glory of God in honor of their 41st wedding anniversary. Dave and Stephanie Opperman are sponsoring the radio broadcast to the glory of God in honor of their anniversary. Let us rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O oh, almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, poor miserable, miserable sinner, sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. 
Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his hosts. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise him, you highest heavens, and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded, and they were created. And he established them forever and ever. He gave a decree, and it shall not pass away. Praise the Lord from the earth, you great sea creatures and all deeps. Fire and hail, snow and mist, stormy wind fulfilling his word. Mountains and hills, fruit trees and all cedars. Beasts and all livestock, creeping things and flying birds. Kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and rulers of the earth. Young men and maidens together, old men and children. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His majesty is above earth and heaven. He has raised up a horn for his people, Praise for all his saints, for the people of Israel who are near to him. Praise the Lord. Glory be to God on high. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, 
Grant that we who have celebrated the Lord's resurrection may by your grace confess in our life and conversation that Jesus is Lord and God. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated. The first reading for this, the festival of the resurrection of our Lord, is from the book of Acts, the fourth chapter, beginning at the 32nd verse. Now the full number of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one said that any of the things that belonged to him was his own, but they had everything in common. And with great power, the apostles were giving their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as were owners of lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold and laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. This is the word of the Lord. The Catechetical Review. In regards to the Ten Commandments, what is the Fourth Commandment? Honor your father and your mother. What does this mean? We We should should fear and love God God, so so that that we do do not despise or or anger our our parents or other authorities, but honor them, serve and and obey them, them, love and and cherish them. The Epistle Reading from 1 John, the first chapter, beginning at the first verse. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we looked upon and have touched with our hands concerning the word of life, the life was made manifest and we have seen it and testify to it and proclaim to you the eternal life which was with the Father and was made manifest to us. That which we have seen and heard, we proclaim also to you so that you too may have fellowship with us. And indeed, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And we are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. He is the propitiation for our sins, and not only for ours, but also for the sins of the whole world. This is the word of the Lord. We rise for the singing of the Alleluia. Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 20th chapter. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, 
Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you withhold the sins from any, it is withheld. If you withhold forgiveness from any, it is withheld. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with, Jesus, with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see in his hands the mark of the nails, and place my finger into the mark of the nails, and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. Eight days later, his disciples were inside again, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands, and put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Having heard the word of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess our Christian faith through the Apostles' Creed. I believe, I believe in, in God, God the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and, and in Jesus Christ, Christ his, his only Son, Son our Lord, Lord who was conceived, conceived by the Holy Spirit, Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, Mary suffered under, under Pontius Pilate, Pilate was, was crucified, died, died and was buried. He descended into hell. hell. The, the third, third day he rose again from, from the dead. dead. He, he ascended, ascended into heaven, into heaven and, sits and sits at the right hand of God, God the Father Almighty. Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the singing of the hymn. The hymn of the day is number 470, O Sons and Daughters of the King, number 470, found in the Lutheran Service Book.
the sermon text this morning from today's gospel reading. These are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. Thus far the words of our text. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Hallelujah. Grace to you and peace from God the Father and our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, in our readings for Easter 2 readings, I know we've touched on that, but that's so important for us that we speak in, in worship service the word of the Lord, the word that was delivered to us through the Holy Spirit to the apostles so that we might have it until our Lord Jesus comes again. And and it's because, as the scripture says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So I think in the readings today, one of the things I meditate, one of the things that just kind of just popped, jumped out, were these um, tangible words and, and considering words. They, they, there's words like touched, fulfillment, um, seen, heard, looked. I mean, there's some, some really words that are chosen very specifically and very thoughtfully for us to to consider uh, contemplation words. And these words point to the results of the life and fellowship in Jesus Christ that we have uh, that lead us and, and, and bring us to our own eternal life. It's pretty absolutely wonderful. Now our first reading today is written by uh, St. Luke. It's in the book of Acts. It is a follow-up or a companion piece to the gospel that Luke had had written. Um, And then our other two readings, the gospel of John and 1 John, both written by the apostle John. Now, both John and Luke very specifically give us the reason why they wrote what they wrote. So let's listen to that for a second, okay? Okay. Uh, Acts is the follow-up or companion to the Gospel of Luke, and Luke writes, inasmuch, this is at the beginning of the Gospel, inasmuch as many have undertaken to compile a narrative. Okay, so many folks were writing things down. So many people have, have undertaken to write a narrative of the things that happened among us, or that have been accomplished among us, just as those who from the beginning, right, the apostles, and the witnesses were eyewitnesses of, uh, and ministers of the word have delivered it to us. So, what's the pattern? He's writing it down because the eyewitnesses and the ministers of the word have delivered that word to the people. And Luke says, it's a good thing to write an orderly account of those things that have happened among us. So he said, it seemed good to me also, having followed all things close. He looked into it. He considered it. He thought about it. Having followed all things closely for some time past, to write an orderly account for you. Put it down in an orderly fashion. Most excellent Theophilus, Now the reason, why is the reason? What is he doing? So that you may have certainty concerning the things that you have been taught, right? So he said, I'm not trying to scam you, Theophilus. I'm gonna write this down. And and, oh, by the way, once it's written down, you can actually go to the people, like at this time Luke was writing, you can go to the people who were alive then and check out what I'm writing, right? So you, you can be certain of the things that I'm writing and teaching you. Right, so the Gospel of Luke takes us from the beginning, right, from the annunciation of the birth of John the Baptist all the way through the Great Commission. Right? Then the book of Acts, what does the book of Acts do? Luke tells us, describes the growth of the apostolic church as a consequence of Christ's life, death, and resurrection. So it's, it's really just kind of laid out. 
Here's the history of the thing. Here's what happened. Here's what, what went down while Jesus was walking the earth. John, at the end of the gospel bearing his name, tells us very specifically this, and this is in our reading for today. Jesus did many other signs, right? Many signs in the presence of the disciples. In fact, we are told, we are told that if, if you wrote down everything that Jesus did, the books that be, would be written, uh, the, the whole world could not contain them. Right, so Jesus did many other things in the presence of his disciples, but these things are written. What things? The things that John records in his gospel. These things are written so that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, and that by believing have life in his name. Mm, okay. So why is John? So John, what he chooses to write down is very, very specific relating to proving that Jesus is the Son of God. So when you read John's gospel, you read those miracles that bring out and accentuate this, this trust that Jesus is the Son of God. And that by believing that, you would have life in his name. And there's that other word again. This word life has been popping up through the entire uh, Easter season, through Lent and, and on Easter Sunday, and now it keeps popping up again so that you would have life in his name. So the point of what John writes is to show his readers and his hearers that Jesus is the Son of God. Jesus is the Messiah who was promised to you in the Old Testament, and he is at the same time as that God in the flesh. So John is writing the gospel. Word means good news. John's writing his gospel and setting forth the realities of Jesus in the witness of his word. What does the word do? The word produces faith in the ones not believing and confirms faith in those who are believing. This is what John says, very clear, right? Produce faith in those not believing and confirm the faith of those believing. He says, well, the ultimate purpose is that by believing, you have life in his name. His, the his being Jesus. You have life in Jesus' name. Again, Jesus is the life. This now, we've touched on this before, but it bears repeating. This, this word that is used, it's very specific, okay? This is life in the absolute. Life as God has it. What the Father has in himself and that he gave to the incarnate Son to have in himself and that which the Son showed forth in the world, right? As the scripture tells us, the life was made manifest and we have seen it and testified to it and proclaimed to you the eternal life which was with the Father and made manifest to us. You and I, all of us, we human beings, were alienated from this life. Because of sin, we were ripped apart from the true life that God gives. And yet we become t partakers of this true life through faith in Jesus Christ. Because Jesus is the author of this life for all who trust in him. Right? Right? And the him is the name of Jesus. And what is the name of Jesus? His person and his work, all that he has done and accomplished on our behalf. So the Father desires that you have, this is the desire of God the Father, that you have life eternal. To do this, how do they do this? The apostles begin to publicly testify to everything that Jesus has done, to what they have seen and what they have heard of Jesus. So the words are important. What is a testimony, okay? The, the, the martyreo, the witness. It is to witness to the evidence that you have seen. That's what it did. When they said the testimony, you look at that book of Acts, testimony to the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That is what they were doing. They were saying, we saw it. We saw it happen, okay? Heard, that which comes to the ears and is thought about, and understood, looked. This word looked, we, we have looked or seen. It means to, to look closely, to pay careful attention to. What is the apostle telling you? That they seriously evaluated their personal experiences. Right? They, they just weren't moony-eyed followers of Jesus. These were serious men 
contemplating serious things, staking their eternal life and their immortal souls on the teaching of Jesus Christ. You better believe they examined it really closely before they decided to follow him as the Messiah. Touched to manipulate by contact. Did you guess that Jesus breathed on them? They felt his breath on their faces, right? They were invited to touch him. They saw him eat, right? They saw these things happen, revealed, made clear, made manifest. You see, the good news of Jesus is not discovered by humans as if we're doing this kind of thing. Oh, what is that? And we discover it, it is revealed to us. It is made known to us through God's holy word. And once it has been revealed, what happens? There is proclamation. This word denotes the ability to report based on the authority of a commission. What does it mean? To pro- this we proclaim to you. Right? They have the authority to proclaim the word of Christ to them because they have a direct commission from Jesus Christ. So they're not just running around willy-nilly, right? saying what they want to say. They have a commission from God to say very specific things related to the very specific Jesus whom they are telling everybody about. So all of these words coalesce together into a comprehensive picture of the mission of the Christian church to proclaim what we have believed to the ancient witnesses of our fathers in the faith. That one, this is what John said, that one which was from the beginning, he, the word of life, God's son, Jesus Christ, that person we have heard, we have, we have beheld, we have seen, we have handled, that was him. This is the same Jesus who said, I am the life, and again, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, yet though he die, will live. He is Jesus, the divine essence in its, set, in its personality and its actions, the life that took on human flesh, He who is the life showed himself forth to us as the bearer of life for us. We who are dead in our trespasses and sins, he brought that life, the quickening to each of us, right? Of this life, Jesus said to the disciples, you will be my martyreo. You will be my witnesses. That's where we get the word martyr from, right? They witnessed unto death what Jesus had done and said and done for them, right? They are witnessing to something very specific. Not that they had a warm, fuzzy feeling. They are witnessing to the fact that Jesus was risen from the grave. That's what they were witnessing to. Think of John's gospel. Think of John's gospel. How does it begin? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. We have beheld His glory, the glory of the one and only who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. What is that book ended by? I mean, this, this is so neat because you see how John is constructing. John's not like me. I have terrible trouble writing an outline before I write something, okay? You know, when I was in college, you're supposed to write an outline. I like wrote the paper, then did an outline off of it and turned it in. John, you can see, he's like, he's got an outline and he's got it written down. And in the front end is God is in the flesh. And at the end of his book, we have Thomas, what we read today. And Thomas gives that great confession. And what is it? My Lord and my God. God came to us. The beginning, at the end, my Lord and my God. John bookends that with the divinity of Jesus Christ. And what led Thomas to this confession? It's Jesus appearing to him and saying, my hand. Pulls his, his tunic apart. Put your fingers here, Thomas. Thomas sees and beholds. He sees and beholds what the other disciples had seen and beheld. Jesus just appearing to them didn't climb in the window, didn't knock on the door. He was just there. He passed through the walls. He was just there. He just appeared. He knew what Thomas had said without anybody telling him and invites Thomas to touch. Thomas's reaction, my Lord and my God. Then he said, peace. These things here, these scars, 
this piercing, this gives you peace. That's what you have. The true peace that which was shattered in Eden is the true peace that Jesus remakes. The peace with God the Father. God was angry at sin, and now that anger and that wrath is paid for and appeased, and he is no longer furious with mankind. That is the peace that passes all understanding. Dear friends in Christ, that is the peace that the church brings to you. That is the peace that the word of God brings to you. You are reconciled to the Father. Even though we have been rebellious children, we are reconciled through the work of God's very own incarnate Son. The peace that the wounds that the disciples saw testify to the peace that was won by Jesus on the cross. This very thing is the forgiveness of all your sins. So here Jesus shows the very price which bought their peace. His pierced hands, his torn side, his, his pierced heart, all of his evidence of death by crucifixion. By his stripes we are healed. And of his resurrection they see that he is real, he is physical, he breathes, he eats, he speaks. It's all evidence. Evidence that is seen, evidence that is written down, not by one or two, but seen by hundreds. As the apostle tells us, Jesus appeared to 500 of the brethren at once. It has been written down by several, Matthew, Mark, Luke, right? Paul, James, to name a few and we could go on, it was recorded for us so that we would come to believe that Jesus is exactly who he says he is, the fulfiller of the promise, the sacrifice to end all sacrifices, the risen Lord reigning to all eternity. Jesus says peace to you, peace through his extended hand pierced by the nails, by his punctured heart that takes your guilt away, This is the thing that brings you peace with God so that you may have life. The purpose of the words of the holy writers, so very carefully chosen and inspired by the Holy Spirit are the testimony and the witness written down for all time so that you would believe and have life in Jesus' person and his work, everything that makes up his holy and sacred name. Blessed are you who have not seen and yet have believed. Amen. Now may that peace which passes all understanding be in your hearts and minds through the one true faith in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Let us now rise for the singing of the offertory. Please be seated for our musical interlude in place of the reception of our offerings. You have been sharing in the morning worship at Zion Lutheran Church, 205 Pulaski Street in Lincoln, Illinois, where you have just heard Rev. Mark Thompson deliver the message for this morning. If you cannot be physically present, join us every Sunday morning on the radio at 8 a.m. over WLLM 1370 a.m. or WLLM 105.3 FM or on Facebook Live or on the internet at www.zlclinc.org. 
Zion services are also available on Cable Channel 5 and on the LCTV app on your smartphone on Saturday at 10 a.m. and 5 p.m. and on Wednesday at 5 p.m. Zion is a member congregation of the Worldwide Fellowship of the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod. If you are without a church home, we invite you to become a part of the Zion family. If we may assist you in any way, please call us at 732-3946 or write to us at Zion Lutheran Church, 205 Pulaski Street, Lincoln, Illinois, 62656. Zion also offers a premier education with a Christian worldview for children from age 3 through the 8th grade at Zion Lutheran School. If you would like more information concerning our school, please contact the school office at 732-3977. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Heavenly Father, it is by grace we are saved through faith on account of Christ. We thank you for sending your Son to be the sacrifice for sin. We thank you for his resurrection, which shows your approval of his divine work. We praise you that you caused the witness of the apostles to be written down, that we might have the faith that comes by hearing and the life eternal that comes from faith in Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Jesus, Savior and Lord, we pray for all those we know who are sick and desiring your healing touch. We ask you to return Norm Mueller to health as he continues to recover from his surgery. We pray for any of our loved ones who battle illness, asking for the return to strength. And please, O oh Lord, be with those known only to you as their prayers rise before you. May the sick be granted health according to your will and faith, faith to face their adversities. Lord, in your mercy. Hear Holy God, hear us as we pray for the leaders of our congregation, as they strive to be both faithful to your great commission and wise in earthly affairs. Endow our elected officers and congregational volunteers with your spirit and with the wisdom to lead us in proclaiming life in Christ to our town. Lord, in your mercy. These and all other petitions we bring before your throne of grace and mercy, praying the prayer your son taught us to pray. Our Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Blessed Lord, you have caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning. Grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that by patience and comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and ever hold fast 
the blessed hope of everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and grant thee his peace. The closing hymn is number 763, When Peace Like a River, number 763 in the Lutheran Service Book. Please be seated. Uh, again, it's very nice to have so many folks here this morning and ready to uh, attend Sunday school after attending worship. Uh, 
parents of smaller children, you've gotten the emails and the, the what we're supposed to do. So uh, here in a second, we'll have you take your children to uh, their classes and to their teachers. Uh, high school uh, and high school slash college, those are college age, are together, uh, still upstairs. And I do have some copies and books for you, so I'll bring those upstairs uh, as soon as I'm changed. And then I'll go from that to the adult Sunday school class. Um, the lilies, if you ordered a lily and would like to take it home, uh, please feel free to do so uh, today. Just come and get them and, uh, in between services and uh, take them uh, home with you. And may the Lord bless you all, your comings in and your goings out from this time forth and forevermore. Amen.